Yes, come in. What does that look for, sailor? Ah, you haven't seen my quarters here in Ostenso. A far cry and... and far less cozy than the quarters aboard my ship. But if her Infernal Magistrix, Queen Abigail II of the thrice damned House of Throne demands me ashore, who am I to disobey? Now for what purpose do you interrupt my studies? I see. An update on the Sea Hag's Revenge mission. Have you found the crew? Hmm. Hmm hmm. Interesting. Most interesting indeed. Perhaps this could be of use to us. And you're sure this is the same crew that Mr. Artrov sailed upon? The same Mr. Artrov that this so-called sail finds themselves cozied up to? Mm. Indeed. Most fortunate. Let's keep this information between you, me, and the Reaper of Reputation. Mr. Altrov will soon learn the fate of his old mates and will also learn about Bully and Tessa's involvement in that. After all, why do the work when they can destroy themselves from the inside? Make sure you have men waiting for them, for when they inevitably arrived at, well, you know, the dominoes will fall, and all I need is to give the first one a little push. You may go. See you soon, Vooly. podcast i am your gm jason what is going on folks how are we doing tonight doing great doing great pretty cool pretty good i'd say okay <laughs> rachel's just an mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Rachel, Corey? i'm here too i suddenly find myself pondering the idea that if we in fact are living within some form of simulation do the people who make the simulations also eat chili is that something that's like a transient thing from the overlords that's like hard loaded or there are three guarantees in life life there are life and death like texas taxes and chili that is those are the guarantees Life, death, life, death, death taxes, and chili. Yeah. Three things that are guaranteed. Yeah, and they're beautiful spread. <laughs> life and death just kind of coalesced. <laughs> maybe that's just me. I'm a big fan of chili. I know it's kind of that time of year. Getting a bit colder. We don't want to cook every night because it's dark. Throw a bunch of stuff in a slow cooker. Anybody else kind of getting like the, the chili and soup? mood in this yeah. pre-Christmas. Yeah, so chili's a chili's a big thing. I I love cooking chili. I I like to tell people that I have won three time. I'm a three time chili cook off champion at my work department. So nothing super fancy. It's just my department at work. It's not an official like major 
chili cook off or anything. So, uh, yeah, I know you're. I know you're rolling your eyes. I can hear you rolling your eyes, listener. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love cooking chili, and I think we had talked about this. I think we were, we we're going to have to do a chili round table in the Discord where we pick a day. Everybody cooks chili. And we all eat chili and show off pictures of our chili food porn. There was a reason chili was on my brain. This is all completely logical. Yes. I just want I just want the excuse to make more chili again. I made really good chili yesterday for Jackson and I's like little date that we had. It was very cute. It was on top of Fritos and it had some cheese, sour cream, perfect. So it's like a walking taco minus the actual like bag of chips. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, it was a Frito it. pie. The the bag of chips was included. The bag of chips was what the Frito or was what the chili was on top of. Yeah, but it wasn't in a bag. I mean, we just put it in a bag. We it in bowls. It wasn't in a bag. <laughs> Gotta put it in a bag. The, the bowl does fundamentally change it. Yeah. It's not a walking taco if it is not in the bag of Fritos. Jackson's studying really hard. He's you're, you're really contemplating. You can hear the gears whirring. I, I have I have food theories that put me on list, so I can't say but I I have the uh there there's the yeah, I got you listening. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> there's the uh theory that all foods are one of four things. A salad, a soup. A sandwich or a ravioli. I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate. We have different names for food for a different, like, for a reason. <laughs> what about, like, a steak? Like, a big chunk of meat? What category is that? You're not going to like the answer. I want to know. It's a salad. I hate it here. <laughs> I, I leave the podcast. <laughs> I mean, not- How is it a salad? Because it's ingredients tossed in a bowl, but in this case, it's one it ingredient one placed on a plate. Of T-bone. Jackson, yeah. are you I tossing know. steaks in bowls? My little. Well, it's, well, it's not a sandwich, it's not a ravioli, and it's not a soup, so. Two worlds, my everything, my heart, my soul. You got to take back right now. <laughs> take it back. Do you cook much? No. A steak dinner is a salad, and I will die on this hill. You're going to die by my hands. Yeah, I, w- I will say that a pop tart is a ravioli. Yes, agreed. Yeah, it's a dessert ravioli. That's fair. I I can't I can't work under these conditions. We're just gonna lose it. <laughs> we name food this way for a reason. That's like your your argument, Lunar, is like saying saying that cereal isn't just a cold soup. Okay. Now, I have literally a reaction image that we've used in the TRT Discord because people like to bring this up all the time of like, aha, aha, a hot dog's a sandwich or something stupid like that. There's a great comic on the internet from Alex uh, Cro- Crocus, uh, and it's called Contrarian versus Genius. And it has one guy who's wearing a tra- Contrarian shirt says, a hot dog is technically a sandwich. A genius comes into the room. It's not, you hold them differently. Oh well, then a hot uh, then a taco must be a hot dog. It's not. They taste different. Sometimes things are different. That's why we have different words. <laughs> I've been uh, it with you all. But if it's we true. zoom out of that, Jackson, I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. You are my everything. Don't do this to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Note that it wasn't "Don't do this to me." It's "Don't do this to yourself." <laughs> Because you will have to face a wrath that you do not know yet. Is it a righteous wrath? Yes. <laughs> totally tubular, my guy. Listen, I am not. I am not unfamiliar with food crimes, so. You once recorded a video and sent it to me out of spite when you were in college, because I was disgusted at the fact that you did at one point in time with us dating. You did put ketchup on your mac and cheese, and I was so appalled by it. Because well, I'm not, not used, at all. but it's I'm like, not used to that. I am not I, used to that. My worst offense that comes to mind that I've ever committed is I, I 
was at a buffet and this is how you know it's a red flag and I had salmon and I had vanilla ice cream and I only had the one fork and I wasn't going to bother, you know, making two, two trips with the fork to eat said items. So I was eating salmon and ice cream at the same time and it wasn't bad at all. And then I realized it was making my aunt who was sitting across the table from me feel very unwell. So I got really into it and yeah. So I doubled down. <laughs> so I doubled down. Yeah. I went back for more. So we're no longer recording the episode. We now have to address Corey's food crimes. <laughs> You're out there. There's I know that there's worse We're putting chat. Corey on food court. <laughs> hey, I'm the guy who can make a no-bake cheesecake and have it mold overnight in the fridge, so... Oh, oh. How? No. Everything else in the fridge was fine. It was just a... I made... I was like... I bought the ingredients and everything the day before made it following the instructions put it in the fridge next morning straight layer of green fuzz across the entire oh, that's not good yeah, yeah, yeah. i tried making cookies the other day they came out nice and rock solid i'm proud of myself they weren't burnt they were just crispy i made homemade chex mix well, well, your pictures about it delicious I'm not going to get over, I'm not going to get over the fact that you did vanilla ice cream and salmon together from a buffet, from an all-you-can-eat buffet, no less. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, knows what, who wonders what mean, or, uh, round two and three, if that was round four, were, were made up of. My body was a graveyard at that point already, <laughs> so why slow down? Or a Wonderland. <laughs> or a Wonderland. I think I was probably there for a soccer tournament, so probably not great shape afterwards, let's be honest. Salmon and ice cream at a all-you-can-eat buffet after running for 90 minutes straight doesn't sound like a great plan. You know who is in great shape, though? The party. Mostly Zaba. Nice save. I'm going to still be thinking about this, Corey. You're not safe from my wrath. Because the party is, is also not safe right yeah. now. Because last we left off, y'all made the trek to Moonshadow Isle. And yeah, it was pretty fairly uneventful trip. Aside from, you know, the Captain Prince getting his panties all up in a, in a wad because, well, his panties got chewed on by... <laughs> blood mouse and I'm sorry listeners I sound funny because I have a cold and I am trying my hardest not to cough on microphone right now so that's why I sound a little different he's doing the lord's work be thankful be grateful even yeah. edit the coughs out in post yeah <laughs> I'm going to try I'm going to try to edit as many of the coughs out as I can but cough also, warning yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cough warning in case I miss one. But yeah, you made it to Moonshadow Isle. And you made it to an old a beach that's fairly abandoned. Upon which is a shack that's in disrepair. The door on the shack has long since gone. The roof has collapsed. But <clears throat> as the party approaches... I forget who 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 was it that made the check. Timothy, who last made that check. It was person. Timothy. Yeah. It was Timothy who last succeeded a perception check to notice that. Well, the roof that's caved in isn't all it's cracked up to be. As a matter of fact, the roof part of the roof itself is a creature. And I'm going to show this to the party since it's been a couple weeks. <laughs> do you remember that? I do. Oh, yeah. Little roof set a bead. Yeah, it's yeah. like a, um, like the um, chest burster xenomorph. Yeah, face hugger. God, it's yeah. so freaky looking. I love it. Yeah, the face hugger larva. Yeah. And we are going to go into initiative. Yeah, it makes sense. So let's unpause 
Let's throw the party into initiative and let me take my creature and throw it into initiative. Oh my goodness gracious. And let's roll. Yeah. Let's see, initiative. Eight on the die for 22. A 12 on the die for a 25. Oh, no, I did bad math. I saw the wrong die. I rolled a 14, uh, 17 on the dive for a 31. Zelda I... was ready. Huh, that was weird. I thought I rolled good. I guess I mistaked my dice. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Well, all the dice came on at once. So I was like, oh, weird. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Cringe. Well, Zaba. You're the first to react as this thing started moving upon the the roof and actually starts, you realize that the collapsed roof is, I shouldn't say it's moving upon the roof. The whole roof that's collapsed is this creature. And for our listeners, this thing is huge. It is a three by three, 15 by 15 creature. And Zaba, you're the first one that gets to act. So go for it, my dude. Yeah, it appears hostile, right? Oh yeah, this thing does not look happy. As a matter of fact, this thing looks like it... It's looking at you like you are its meal since it hasn't eaten in quite a long time. Though, Zaba's probably looking at it much the same. He's been on that boat for five days. Uh, so unfortunately, due to reach restrictions, I do have to use my first action to step five feet forwards. And then I will just strike out at him, kind of test how how durable that tile plate is. First with the trident, and then we'll see what the, the sword does. That's a big old eight on the die for a 22. That is going to be a miss. I won. Oh, okay, I didn't okay. to that. Nope. Oh, that's all right. It's not going to change what he's going to do with the second one. And that's to strike with the sword. Oh, that's a 19 on the die. For a 28. Feel like that's that going to be a hit. All right. And for our listeners, you recently upgraded your sword using the monster parts. I did. So before I roll damage, I'm going to roll a d6 here. Three. Where is my chart? I had it here. I can pull it up as well. All right, my attack is going to do. Uh, looks like one point of lightning damage. All right, it does not look like it applied that extra one point as I implied for it, but uh, that'll be. 13 points of slashing damage and one point of wild electricity. All right, 13 slashing and one lightning. You got her. See. I imagine it's caused from the sparks of the sword skittering along the tiles until they hit flesh. And uh, that is what Zaba got. All right. Well, this thing, it gets to go. It's going to take a five foot step towards Zaba. They get within 10 feet. And it is going to lash out at Zaba with a pseudopod. That always ends well for me. Yeah. Pseudopods and me have a really good track history. Well, with a three on the die, that's going to be a miss. Not by much. And it's going to swing again, and another three on the die. <coughs> oh, this is good. This is good. It's also scaring me. Nice. So we got to sell. Yep. I'm in a lot of great situation, so I'll move up 30 feet. And then, or sorry, 25 feet. So that's my movement speed. Drop into a stance, and then I guess just try to glare at it for intimidation since we can't get close now to hit it. 
which is somewhere in actions. <laughs> there. Oh. 14. 27. Oh, that. 14 plus 13, that's going to be a success, and it is Frightened One. That's it. Mr. The Molten. All right, Mr. The Molten is going to move up 20 feet, get in between Syl and Zaba just to be in an optimal place to do anything if he needs to. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast Days on this little ceiling centipede here. Little. Yeah, you know, relatively tiny. Thanks. Yeah. Well, and it's frightened, so this is a good thing because it's well, it's all of its save go down by one. Hey, let's go. But a 19 on the die is a critical success. All right, not much I can do on that one. <laughs> yeah. Dang, boy. That's all I can do my turn. Mr. Timmy Tim. Uh, it's me. Oh, boy. So I am going to move to get a little bit closer for what I want to do. Uh, let me just see really quick how far away this thing is from me. Uh, one second. I just wanted to move to, I just wanted to see how far away it was. Okay. Yes. So I shall be moving to 20 feet. They'll be right next to my homies. And Arlie's will be next to uh, Vesuviac and Syl. And so I'm gonna look at this weird fucked up centipede r house roof thing. And I'm gonna cast Torch's Trauma upon it. Okay. Needs to make a fortitude save. Make that save. Fuck up. Do it. Fuck up so bad. Ten on the die is a success, so it'll take half damage. Yes, thank God at least. Let me roll that damage. Ooh, Good roll. Solid work on that damage. Yeah, it was fourteen damage. Or really, it was. It's half now for it. All right, yep. and it four two of three D four plus four is really solid though. Yeah, <laughs> and it doesn't seem to take any. Well, shit. Hmm. Oh, it can handle bludgeoning probably. Or well, okay. Zobs, you're up. Oh well, well. You know I'm here. I know what works and what doesn't. Mm. So I'm going to free action drop the trident. It wasn't very effective. And then I'm going to use my first action to grip my sword with two hands. And then I'm going to strike down my foe before it does any harm to my weak little friends. Natural 20. Natural 20 on the first one. Well, that is a successful hit. Yeah, a successful crit. See that damage? Uh, that'll be 30 points of slashing damage. And uh, yeah, roll your wild. All right, and one point of fire damage. Two points, because it's crit. Ah, yes. So 32 damage to this thing. Oh, hot you yeah. off. Give me a moment here. I, I just need to uh, verify something. The sword that I at level five, Zalba gained access to weapon critical specializations. So I just need to see if the sword I'm carrying has anything of the sort. I am not seeing it at this moment, so I'm gonna say I'll worry about it later. You only gain it while raging. Well, saw that brutality only works while raging. Huh. Well, well, he's in control, so not a problem. He'll just swing again. Hmm. Oh, a 19 on the die for a 28. And that's just a normal hit this time. Darn. Alright, let's we'll do that. We will do this. So 15 right. plus just one flashing. One point of lightning. Uh, lightning damage again. Is it weakened? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Teach it to look at me like food. 
It is not. I am not food. It is food. It is roof spider. <laughs> it is roof spider. Okay. It is going to move. It bursts out a set of wings. Oh, it flies. Good. Of course it does. And it's going to land right over here. So it, fl oh. so it flies over Zaba. Well, that was honestly unexpected. And it is going to target Timothy for one. Hey. And miss with a two up. Oh, my God. So I've rolled two threes and a two. Hell yeah. And it's going to target Vesuviac and miss with a, another two on the die. Two threes and two twos. Okay. Can't hey. miss. Well, the frighten goes away at least. So it's your turn. Yeah. Since it's now on the opposite side of Zaba, they can run around behind it. So we're running right past yeah, it. Yeah, that was the plan. Master strategist that we are. And strike at it now that it's off guard from the flank. I always knew that thing had wings and was going to fly over top of me. 17 for 31. Oh, that's a hit. Dang, dude. Sorry, dialogue box. 18 damage. Ooh. Slashing. Okay. And a second swing. Well, seven on the die is going to be a mess. Then, Mister the Molten. All right. Um, I am going to look at this thing uh, a little bit scared because it's gigantic, and it's done absolutely nothing to anybody. It has done nothing to anybody, but it is gigantic, and I don't like its vibe. So I am going to cast Fire Ray on it. Okay. All right, so here comes the roll. 10 20. on the die is a miss. Dang. 21's going to be a miss. Just a miss. Then in that case, we're going to raise my shield and hope to God that I don't get hit. All right, Timmy. No, oh, boy. How how's this thing looking? Would you say if Timothy were to look at this, the creature at this moment in time? Not great. Not great, but like you know, could probably easily probably kill him. Okay. It has uh, a uh, it has a little it has at least it has at least uh, two Timothy's worth of hit points. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's so beefed up. Okay. Which probably means what? It's like a pass of Zaba. Yeah, sure, totally. Oh, I'm guessing right where I'm at, I can't exactly touch the creature, right? No. Okay, so Timothy's gonna do something really stupid and move up one. Okay. And I am gonna cast Flint. I think I'm saying it right. Yeah, Flint. When I touch. When I, with a touch, you strip off the flesh, muscle, and muscle and internal organs off your target, leaving only bare bones. The effect depending on whether the creature is a living creature, undead creature, or inanimate corpse. Creature, of course, the last flesh, muscles, or internal organs is immune to the spell. Uh, or and in, in, internal organs. So, I'm as far as you as far as you know. Yeah, exactly. This is a living creature. Yeah. Uh, I am going to roll to hit this thing then. I got a 23. Did you t target it? Didn't target it. I'm so sorry. That is a hit. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, sorry. I totally forgot about that. All right, then let me roll that damage. That is going to be d6 slashing for a total of 7 damage. All right. It took that damage. Hell yeah. Sick. And that's all Timothy does. He moved up, did this damage, and he looks at Vesuviac at the moment. He's like, remember me. Because <laughs> there's no way this thing isn't attacking him. All right, Zaba. You know, sometimes pre-episode conversations are super practical. 
Because you learn things. Oh. Sometimes you learn things and you decide just to completely forget about them and just keep being you. So I could pick up Timothy and just move him out of the way, see, oh. over to safely, safety, but I'm not going to. Instead, I am going to strike this weird house bug three times. Well, first one's a hit. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, sh uh, that was 17 on the die for a 31. Non-critical, this thing is beefy. Second one's a, a, gonna be a critical miss. All right, let's see if the third one goes through. Oh, sure doesn't, not a four. Well, you hit once. Yeah, here's the damage. So 15 plus five negative. Plus one negative. All right, so. All right, it takes that damage. It is still alive and kicking. Sick. All right. So it hates that. <laughs> Pretty unfortunate. All right. This thing, but you still don't know what it is. Yeah. I mean, we gave it a name, Rip Centipede, right? And we can just yeah. aim things, and that's what they are. The roof appeared. Mr. Roof thing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, so it is going to attempt to envelop both Syl and Timothy. No, thank you. No thanks, actually. I don't want that. I say Una Reverse card, no. <laughs> no thank you. All right. Oh, I didn't. So what's your reflex DCs? My reflex? So it's 10 plus your reflex bonus. Uh, I have a 19. So that's a success, and so? 23. That's also a success. So that's two successes. So you two are both enveloped. Yay. As it, as it kind of slithers on top of you, and you both are considered grabbed and slowed one. So, let me put the grabbed and the slowed condition on both of you. This is fine. Oof. Not great. <laughs> okay. Now it has both of you grabbed and both of you slowed. And yeah. for its final action, it's going to constrict. Whoa. Ah. I'm going to need you both to make this fortitude save. <laughs> Sick. That's pretty neat. Well, that's a success by Sel and a failure by Timothy. Ouch. So. Boom. All right, so success by Sol, you take half of that. Timothy, you take all of that. Give me that damage. Alas. 18 damage, bludgeoning an acid as it constricts you. The both of you. Well, Sil, you're yep. up. You're slowed one, so you only have two actions, and you're grabbed. We are not suffocating, so this is okay. No, no, yeah. no. I will slash at it from the inside. Blech. Seven. Oh. Well, you hit it because it's off guard. Okay. I'll take it. 19. That is... All right. It's still standing. One more. Critical miss. Natural one. That's a Death has a massive door this time. We're fine. Okay. We're all good. Vesuviac is going to move up, move north 15 feet to get up on the uh, northern edge of this giant centipede. And I'm going to breathe fire. Which but we're inside here. Uh, I'm going to do it in a cone that does not target y'all. <laughs> All right, so yeah. 
you, you're placing the cone in that direction. Yes. Okay. Breath of Fire. Burning Hands. AKA Burning Hands. Yep. <laughs> Basic reflex save. Coming on from El Creaturino. I figured this thing would probably not be that agile, so hopefully this does good things. Surprise. It's super agile. No, a giant roof tile c- centipede is probably not going to be about. 19 oh, is a boy. success. <laughs> what the heck? But it'll be half damage, so roll your damage. All right. <laughs> Gets and it'll take half. Whopping three fire damage for your troubles. Congratulations. You have killed this creature. The this creature was called a shingle lurk. <laughs> it's very silly. I like that name. Shingle lurk. Shingle lurk. That is correct. I think Timothy's just lying down on the ground for a second and it just gives like Vesuviac a thumbs up from the ground. Thanks. Still got a tree wounds you because I'm pretty sure you're the only person that got damaged that hey, late. I got damaged. We all got damaged. We both got damaged. Hey, I took that damage. I hover over you and it says perfectly fine. <laughs> it's down a few, eight or something. Okay. Nine. Timothy is literally half a Zaba right now. Heal, heal the poor, poor little creature. Heal the poor little bay eye. All right, I'll heal the, I'll heal the poor, poor little man. Heal the, heal the pathetic meow meow of the group. <laughs> Our hits are almost exactly the same. Sir, I will apply this healing to me. Thank you. I'm almost back up to full. I'm good. Timothy <laughs> just dusts himself off. It's a thanks, Zaba and Vesuviac. Pocket hell. Then if we have another 10 minutes to spare, I'll do you too, so... Yeah, I mean, like, so I was looking at that. Other yeah. Part. And while you're healing, you can refocus as well. Zabi, you want me to join you on oh, looking at the that. house? Yeah, it's, you know, it's whatever. It's a small house. There might you... be some bones in it from its previous victims. Well, when you word it like that, that kind of sucks. But yeah, let's check this thing out. Yeah, so I'll give it a good looky Lou. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you guys do find something in the house. Gasp. Lying in the corner of this ramshackle hut. Ooh. You find yourselves a charm, some kind of something that looks like a shark tooth. Oh my god. Makes me just think of the like the shark tooth charms that you get on like your uh, the necklaces you can find anywhere. Yeah, do you want to identify it? Then I would like to try. I will use my arcana. Oh, not my arcana, my nature. I'm better at that. There he goes. Here we go. Did that do anything? There you go. This is a shark tooth charm. So basically you can affix it to a piece of armor. Ooh. And the user for a free action can activate it. And it's a one and done type thing. But whenever you trigger, when you attempt to escape using acrobatics, you can use a free action to trigger this charm and if you fail your check against the against the, the if you fail the acrobatics check to escape the creature must either release you for a free action or take 2d8 piercing damage so if you fail they have to either release you willingly for free or take damage also been good 5 minutes ago yeah yeah i would have but you have to use acrobatics. I will use acrobatics sparingly. Yeah, Timothy looks at this necklace, looks at the party, he's like, does anybody want? 
Nothing ever captures me. Maybe knocks me over, pushes me into trap. But you'll never like. Zaba, do you want it? You can just say you want it. I'll take it. All right. Yeah. Sure. Timothy tosses it then over to you, so. Go nuts. Yeah, I mean, and hopefully we won't need it, but. If you mm -hmm. want to, you can cr use crafting to attach it. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know if I'm any good at that. Look at this. Oh, I actually am good at things. Is that 19 good enough? Yeah, so yeah. I think it's 10 minutes to uh, fix it. Sounds good. I'll do that while Vesuviac is patching me up. There you go. Nice. Good job, team. Are you back up to full sill? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, and um, beyond that, you grab some monster parts from this from the shingle lurk, and you see a pathway leading deeper into the island, but it forks. Oh. So not far from the beach, the trees over here loom over a narrow path. Okay. And they cloak the ground in a deep shadow. Amid the other growth, the narrow path splits. One path leading deeper into the island, while the right-hand path leads in a direction indicated on Poppy's map. All right. Well, uh, does it look like anybody's been through here much? You know, a path that's more treaded? Yeah, go ahead and make me a survival check. Would you like that blinded? Yes, please. Yeah, you, there's not any tracks that you can that you can find. It doesn't look like anybody's been through here, boss. That's good. I mean, I suppose we'll just go towards the goal then, right? No reason to be here longer than we need to. I will start moving forward in a stealthy manner. Oops. I will try to run through a tree. <laughs> It works, surprisingly. Oh, weird. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, so you're headed to the right. Yeah, that's the way towards the map. So that's okay, right. make me, and you're, you're, you're doing stealth? Yes. Okay, so let me see what your stealth DC is. Plus 14, so 24. 24? And I don't think shadow blending helps. Um, no, if something tries to target me, they have to make a... That's useless. That's a silly feat. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you're making your way through here. You notice that at this point in your pathway, the vegetation opens up into a clearing. Uh, what's plainly visible about this clearing is that it is unhealthy. You see a bunch of black spots, and they have like this tarry goop that's like clinging to like the underbrush. And portions of the trees in this area have been badly scarred, almost like like acid scarred, like something sprayed acid. Uh, the woodland around this area, the infection is worse around a narrow path leading to the south, which you can't really see, so let me drag you in here. Yeah. Around here. Okay. So I'm, I'm painting it on the map. Yeah. There's a pathway that's leading to the south where clearly the infection ha is much worse in that area. Okay. Uh, I'll poke my head back and motion everyone else forward. Cool. I don't know if you guys know about nature. I mean, I haven't really been outside of the city much, but it looks not right. Probably. I know a bit. I know a bit as well. What the fuck? Ooh, yeah, so whoever wants to investigate the Atari substance... I would. So, you could roll... There's an Arcana check, a Nature check, or an Occultism check. 
I'm better at nature. So, so that'd be the second one. <clears throat> Anybody else doing some investigation? Sabo will get out here and uh, do his version of investigating. I just can't quite figure out where I can place myself. Thank you. Mm. So which one do you want to roll, Zaba? So Arcana's the top one, Nature's the middle, and Occultism's the bottom. Oh, none of those. He's just going to poke around a little bit with his sword. Okay. So you're not... He's just checking out the so, corruption. Yeah, so right as Timothy and Vesuviak are kind of scratching their noggins, trying to figure out what the hell this stuff is... You notice three creatures start showing up from the underbrush. Tiny little things. As they show up and they and they start yelling at you in common. They almost look like humanoid dolls that have been made and fabricated out of branches and brambles, but their faces their faces are scowling. And it's almost like they've been dipped in that sludgy toxin, that tarry goo, that seems to be blighting this forest ground. And they immediately start leaping right at you. And we're quick going to take care of this fight. So let me grab everybody, put everybody into combat. Double combat. Whoa! We rolled that bad, my man? Oh, yeah. Well, Beads. Definitely wasn't perceptioning or uh, stealthing my way into this initiative. I don't like how they got good initiative. I did not. I rolled a three. I got a nine. Dang. Three nines and a three. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. Okie dokie. So let's go. The first little tiny creature thing is going to act as it's going to... Oh, hold on. I can't... I'm not, not going to grab the entire party. Let's just grab it by itself. This thing's tiny, so it starts occupying the same exact space that is... That is in Z that is Zaba. So it starts occupying Zaba's space, or one of Zaba's spaces, as it goes in. And it will start to, yeah, that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna splinter spray, as this thing's gonna put a 15 foot cone. Oh jeez. Right there. Yeah, right there. All right. Oh, boy. So I'm going to need both Zaba and the Suviac to make that reflex save for me. <laughs> oh, man. Success by Zaba. Failure by Vesuviak. All right. So well, Zaba, right you'll take half damage. Vesuviak, you'll take full. Oh, boy. Nine is the total. Not great <laughs> on my rolls. On 4d6. We'll take shitty rolls for now, man. Yeah, that could have been a 32. I'll take the 9. Mm -mm. Alright, the second one's gonna go and it will... Well, it couldn't have been a 32. I'm bad at math. <laughs> 24 would have been the total. That's it. That's the number. Thanks. <laughs> Oh boy, Pathfinder. Am I, am I cut out to play this game? <laughs> Basic math. It is going to occupy the same space as Vesuviac. Cringe. Stop that. Get some help. It's going to target Vesuviac. And it will strike. And miss with a natural three. Oof. Let's go. Strike. With his claws. 
and miss with the 12. Okay. Now we go to Vesuviac. Vesuviac, before you act. Before you act. Yeah. Make this will save. Oh, no. Oh, good. That's not a good sign. Well, I could be good at those. I'm a cleric. There we go. You're fine. You're fine. You're okay. Yeah. That's not a good sign. You got 29 on the roll. Yeah, it's not a good sign at all. I actually don't like that whatsoever. Can I target the one that is on Zaba? That's occupied in the same space? Yeah. Yes. Okay. How do I do that sound tree? Because I keep clicking Zaba. <laughs> hit Z. Hit the Z key. It'll hit the. It'll get the next token in the stack. Ha. Huh. There we are. Okay. Awesome. So I am going to. Let's do this. I got to go ahead and move up five feet to get to uh, to get in range of this weird little stick man. I haven't yet drawn my sword, so I gotta take an action and draw it. And then we're gonna go ahead and just make a standard melee attack on this thing just to kind of see how that's going to do against it. All right. Well, natural two is gonna be a mess. Shit, dude. Dice are cold tonight. That's all I can do. All right. Well, this twig man's gonna move up. And it's going to spray that cone right at Syl and Timothy. Gross. Bad. I don't like it. Stop it. Uh, All right. So you two need to make this reflex save. I don't want to. I don't want to. Well, <gasps> Syl's so, so a success. You'll take half. And hey. Timothy's a failure. You'll take full. That's not the first time we've heard that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks for healing me before, Jackson. Because... Oh. 13. That's how much you healed before. What? <laughs> All right, we go to Timothy. So, Sick. Timothy, first things first, you make that will save. God, let me, really let me link it. Know. Let me link it. There you go. I should be good at these. Critical success. You're fine. Told us we get these. Okay. I don't like this one that tried to hit me and my homies, so I'm gonna actually start using my shield star, star knife. So I draw it for my first action. Okay. And then my next action afterwards is to fucking toss this thing. I guess, or I guess I would be tossing it. Since it's not right there next to me. Oh, it, yeah. You, no, you can you can swing. Oh, well, I'm gonna swing at this it's, thing. It's in the square that's adjacent to you. Okay. So, yes. Let me. Uh. Yes. All right. I'm gonna swing for. Ooh, 19 on the die is a hit. Hell yeah! I did it. And then. Two and a one, for three damage. Oops. Oh, uh, and I guess I'll go to try to hit it again. And so then, because I'm trying to hit it again, doesn't it go lower down, or am I good? Yes, yes. Yeah, so you got to use the second, the second thing. Oh, I don't know if I have that one actually. Yeah, it'll so under strikes, it'll be a minus one instead of a plus three. Oh, yes, I see that. The minus one. Okay. Yep. I guess is this? Yes. Okay. Eight on the die is going to be a miss. Oops. Poor buddy's nerfed. Well, I tried, kids. So. Yeah. I'm going to move. First of all. No. You're going to make a will save. Oh, wait. Hold on. Wait. I, that's the, ignore that. <laughs> I rolled for Timothy. That's not what I mean. Timothy's yeah. good modifier. Timothy's will save. Super good. Three on the die, so. Not good. Normal failure. I'm sure it's fine. So you are going to be 
frightened too. Gross. As these little twig stick figure things are very unsettling to you. Yeah, they are. They remind me of those uh, clockwork doll things. The screws. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to drop it to my stance, move through, down, kind of by Vesuviac so I can flank the one that Timothy hit. Timothy. Yeah. Uh, okay. 11 on the die is going to be a hit. Hit. 23. 8 damage. Yep. Oh, you got my range. Okay. And then I suppose I will strike it again. For attention. Nope. Good rolls are all gone. All right. Zaba, you're up. And Zaba, you also have to make that will save. I was going to say, let me guess. I get to make a will save. That's a natural one. Do you want to use a hero point? Do you have one? You do. I don't want to use it. Okay. Well, you'll be frightened four. Cool. What comes with frightened four? Minus four to everything. At the end of your turn, your frightened goes down by one. Cool. I'm just scared. That's fine. Yeah, these doll twig things are super unsettling to you. They're so small and skittering. A bunch of gremlins came out of the woodworks. Yeah, and I'm, I'm oddly terrified of them, so I'm going to start chopping with the one on my left. Not sure I can quite handle the one that's on my own leg. Well, oh, 18 on the die is a critical hit. Holy shit. All right, let's see how he holds up. is not rolling the two crew. Tonight. I've been I've been rolling pretty strong here. Oh my god! Well, that'll be fifty points of slashing damage and two points of cold. Okay, man, that is a dead. Hold on, wait, no, undo that. That would have uh, that is a dead creature. That would have dropped me to one health from full. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I just did a full Timothy of damage to that guy. Sure, That's totally. Actually, second that action step. to step. Third action to strike the one that also took down dam- or damage so. With the Frightened Four, that was... Oh, that's a miss because of the Frightened Four. It had, to, it had to happen somewhere. Well, you go down the Frightened Three, so that's good. Nice. That's cool. I was, I was, you know, I was ready for fleeing. Well, the one that you just kind of stepped away from is going to step into Vesuviac space for one action. Is going to target Vesuviac with a claw and miss with a five. Five on the die is a miss. Another claw. 17 on the dies and finally a hit. Barely. Not so woo. So that'll be 12 slashing damage to you, Vesuviac. All right. And hold on. We're not done. I'm going to need you to make that fortitude save. Oh, boy. Yeah, turn into one of these things. 21? That's a success. You're fine. Hell yeah. I don't like that. When you say you're fine, I'm like worried. It's like you've now been given like something awful that will come up later. All right, Vesuviak, you're up. All right, I'm going to take a five-foot step to the southeast to make sure that the guy that just attacked me is being flanked by Zaba and myself. And I'm just going to wail on it with, uh, with my scimitar. So here comes the first attack. 21. It's a hit. <laughs> All right. Let's throw out that damage. It will take that that damage. All Our right. Damage. Then second attack. Let's go for it. That is a 16. That is a hit. All right. That is an additional 10 damage. It will take that 10 damage. Hell yes. All right. 
Well, the one that's in between Timothy and Syl is going to step into Syl's space. Bitch, no thank you. Target Syl with claws. No. 11 on the die. Because you're frightened one, that's going to be a hit. And you'll take 11 points of damage. And I need you to make a fortitude save. Yep, more threes. Three on the die is a fail. You're drained one. Oh, that's bad. That's real bad. Wow, this drinks. Drained is bad. Let me pull it. Let me pull it up here. Give me so I can read it verbatim. I'm so glad every time one of these effects come up. And I just look over at Zaba's sheet, and under immunities, it just says all the weird status ailments that, that suck. <laughs> it says it right there. <laughs> Very handy. When a creature successfully drains you of blood or life force, you become less healthy. Drained always indicates a value. You take a status penalty equal to your drained value on constitution-based checks, such as fortitude saves. You also lose a number of hit points equal to your level, minimum of one, times the drained value, and your maximum hit points are reduced by that same amount. Yep. Yikes. Until yep. I sleep. Until you get a full a full night's rest, your drain val at which point your drain value decreases by one. Yay. It's the worst. Okay. But you're immune to that. You're immune to the draining impact because you just took it. It's one way to get it. Oh, they can't stack up drain levels? No, it, it says right here, whatever the result, the creature is immune to the same twig jacks, to the same twig jacks husks draining impact for 24 hours. So that's where this is going to turn into a thing where all of a sudden... Like, Zaba had Timothy level hit points. Be embarrassing. Oh man, so embarrassing. God. <laughs> but the attack is going to retire. Spit a splinter at Timothy. <laughs> On the die is going to be a miss. So, Timothy, it's your turn. Sick. I'm going to. Oh, I'm going to attack the thing that just hit my homie. So, Timothy's going to move up. And I target the little freak that hit my friend. Okay. Piercing, do I want versatile? Since I'm not throwing it. Well, you could do choose piercing or slashing. Oh, I'll choose slashing. Cause yeah, I mean, you, you haven't recalled knowledge. So you don't know what the- Yeah, exactly. Let me roll to hit this thing. Don't oh, yeah. fuck the matter. Three on the dice, yeah. All right, I'm gonna try to hit it one more time. Cause like, this is the best thing Timothy's. Oh, actually, can I recall knowledge on this little freak actually? Yeah. You brought it up, but I haven't done a recall knowledge in so long. Absolutely. God, I'm, I actually don't, but I don't have that as a thing for me to do. If I'm not mistaken. Or it's like not on my list of reactions or actions to do. Yeah, so if you want to recall knowledge, you can do it with... Let me see here. One second. I'm so mad about my fucking weapon not hitting. Um... Alright, so, so on your token tooltip, so if you hover over your token... Yes. You see where there's those three boxes in the bottom right-hand corner? You hover over it, it says extras. Yes. If you click on it, you can click recall knowledge. Okay, yes, I see. Just click on that. And what that'll do is that will auto roll. It'll automatically roll for me secretly. And it will give me the ro most relevant one that works for that creature that you targeted. Okay, because I have it targeted. And so that's a success. Sick. Fuck is this? Fuck is this little creature? This is called a twig jack husk. So this is the husk of a twig jack. 
Husks are basically the plant version of undead. Sick. Okay. So this is a twig jack, but the husk version of it. Oh, of wit. Of it. Maladjusted forest denizens, twig jacks, form from the cruel and prankish combination of fey and the very woods in which they reside. A twig jack's body is made up primarily of prickly brambles woven with vines. Shaggy, mossy growth, not unlike hair, tops a twig jack's head. Its mouth is just a canyon of splintered and broken sticks bisecting its face. Leaves and sprigs of new growth randomly sprout from the creature's body. Many dense forests on Galarian have at least a handful of twig jacks living in the undergrowth. And this happens to be the husk of a twig jack. Gotcha. So, it is chaotic evil, fey, and plant. What would you like to know? You can get two things. Okay. What is it immune to? It is immune to emotion effects. So, it can't be frightened, it can't be charmed, that kind of stuff. Okay, that makes sense. And then what is it vulnerable to? It doesn't have any vulnerabilities. Oh, okay, wait, wait, hold on. Vulnerabilities are weaknesses. So it is vulnerable to fire. It has a weakness to fire. Okay, that made sense, but I was like, let's just make sure. Cool. So Timothy relays that information to the party and to his homies. Looks to Vesuviac and just says, torch these fucking things, dude. All right. And it is Syl's turn. Yep. I will step back so that I'm flanking once more with Timothy. Yippee! And strike. Eight. This is going to be a hit. That's good. And that's a 21. 15. With that sneak attack damage, that's a yeah. chunky, chunky hit. And again... Do it. I believe in you. Ten on the die. Mm. It's going to be a hit. Oh. This is... 19's a hit. Yes. 16 with that sneak attack damage. Still standing. Saba? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I'm going to swing on these guys. We're going to see what happens. If they go down easy, I have fun flavor thing I would like to do with my third attack. Ooh. Let's start with the one right in front of me and see how much damage he gets. Oh, the fun, one right in front of you is a hit. That was a um, seven on the die for 18, which is a hit. Acid damage? Acid. You want that fire damage, man. I know. Perfect, so that'll be 20 points of damage overall. Oh, and you, and you actually added the acid. Sweet. Yeah, figured it out. Oh, still standing. Still standing, all right. Guess I'll have to uh, do this the old-fashioned way. Seven on the die is going to be a miss. Unfortunate. Because of that frightened. Because of the frightened. Well, and then I... Uh, I would like to reach out and grab and reposition the one that was a little further away from me. Okay. Right. So make an athletics check, and this will be at a map because it is an attack. So it'll be minus 10 on that athletics. Oh, let me check us too. All right, we'll have to manually remove. So won't let me do it there. All right, so that's a 26 less 10. So 16? 16. Gets us fortitude DC. Oh, barely. And it's because of the frightened. Shit. I would uh, like to just pick him up. Just gotta set him over here. Yeah, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fail, unfortunate. Oh, he, I failed, yes, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, your frightened goes down to two. Nice. I made some real big divots in the ground. These little guys, you know, they're so hard to hit. I agree, man. All right. Well, 
The twig jack hawks is gonna scamper on over to Timothy. How gross! Target Timothy. Don't do that. And try to hit Timothy with that claw. Don't do that. And miss with a natural one. Sub. <laughs> Target Timothy again. And miss with a nine. Your boys got plot armor today. All right, Vesuviac, you're up. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I was told to torch, and I think I'm going to go ahead and torch the one that is currently being flanked by Sil and Timothy. So, uh, casting a fire ray to that one. Do it. That's a 26. That's a hit. All right, we're rolling Six damage. Mega die. That is <laughs> 18. All right. And so it took 23 damage. And this thing is toast. Quite okay. literally. Then for my last action, I just got to go ahead and shield up. Uh, just in case, I don't want to use my battle medicine yet. Thanks. All right, Timmy. You're All up. right. Can I? I'm gonna hit the little idiot in front of me. Uh, I guess I should move. Should yeah. I? No, I will. I will hit. I will just hit it. And then I have to target it with like a uh, with Z. Yeah. So Z will cycle through the cocons oh. that are on the same spot. Got it. Okay. Is, is it currently being flanked? Is it? I mean, I guess it would be since currently Zaba is on top of it too, isn't it? We'll see. It probably doesn't. It doesn't calculate it for me on my side. I think. Oh well. Well, 19 on the die is a hit, regardless. Fuck yeah! Look at me, guys. I'm hitting. The two damage. Two damage. Hey guys, <laughs> gotta love it. Hey, is it still alive? It is dead. No. Oh. Man, I was really looking forward to killing it while it was clinging to Timothy. <laughs> it is dead. And that is where we'll leave off because these Twin Jacks party ended. But we hope your party doesn't end. And thanks for listening. Yeah. If you like the show, join our Discord and share the show with a friend that you think will enjoy it. Because that is the best way to get more listeners is word of mouth. Word of mouth is king, gang. If your friends think that roasts are salad and cereal is soup, then they'll be amongst I'm friends. I'm just going to walk out of the podcast. With this <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye. We're going to die by my hand. The Jewel of the Indigo Isles Adventure Path is copyright 2023. All logos, titles, and artwork are property of Skyscraper Studios and Roll for Combat and used with permission. Pathfinder is a trademark of Paizo Incorporated. The theme music is written and performed by Robbie Whiplash.